Ah, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. It's Jason with Rotoboss Rotary Attachments and JR Custom Designs. Uh, welcome to episode three of the Turn and Burn podcast. And today, as you can see, we have a special guest, and that is Katie. I will take off her face so <laughs> you can see her. Hello, hello, um, hello. So uh, for those of you guys that um, have been watching, this is our third episode. I'm Jason, um, the owner of JR Custom Designs and the maker of Rotoball Shorty Attachments. And we have Kitty Devlin here with us today specifically to talk about uh, rotary wraps and things of that nature. So if you got questions, please feel free to ask. And I'll turn it over to Katie. She can introduce herself. Okay. Um, so if you don't know me, I am Katie Devlin. My brand is Things Katie Makes, um, mostly here on YouTube, but also Facebook and uh, occasionally Instagram. Um, and I have been in the laser world for about, I guess we're going on four years now, probably. I mean, it's like end of 2020. I wasn't one of those early 2020 people. Um, but specifically got into like rotary and wraps early last year. Um, and was just kind of obsessed with how that worked and the ideas and how to make it simple. Um, I mean, Jason and I talk about it a lot, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he answers a lot of questions for me. Um, but I think there's a lot of complexity that people are facing and things that are confusing. Um, and we like to try to make it simpler. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, she is our first, uh, guest on the show uh unfortunately chris can't be with us he's on traveling right now and wasn't able to make it back in time so you're stuck with just me and katie so um uh one of the things uh the reason i wanted to bring you on here is one a lot of people have questions about wraps i mean wraps is yep. really big right now and you know even though i'm i've been doing this for almost 10 years i've been building rotaries for about four and a half years five years um, but I've still yet to do a wrap. <laughs> really? I didn't realize you've never done one. I've, I've done a, a wrap that basically it was just a bunch of, um, people's names. They had okay. the, the, the Stanley cup. Um, so they used a black Stanley cup and they put names all the way around it, but I've never done an actual wrap where they're kind of intermingled. Okay. Um, or where they come together completely seamless. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately I'm not the, the best person to ask about that. And I usually point people towards you because I know you do a lot with that. And, yeah. and when you started doing it, I thought you were nuts. Cause <laughs> that's, 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 like, I do like remember you, that conversation. It seems like you eat and sleep rotary wraps and trying to figure it out and everything. And I'm glad yeah. to see that you, that you've, uh, that you've done what you've done because, um, I would say, I mean, there's, there's other people out there, but I would say you're probably, in my opinion, in the forefront of kind of doing that thing. There's people that have probably been doing it a little bit longer, but you seem to kind of push the envelope on, on what you can do on your designs and, and everything. So well, thank um, you. that's the main reason I wanted to get you on because I know a lot of people have questions about it and I'm not the person to ask. And plus, <laughs> you know, doing this, it getting the information from you as well kind of helps me. Uh, moving forward as well. So um, I linked the description to her latest video, which is about 35 minutes long. It's long, sorry. It's um, a long one. It is a little long, but there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of information in there um, on how to set things up and from starting your machine to, you know, cleaning off your, your product. Um, I think it's a really good video. So the link's in there. It's also at the bottom of the screen. And uh, so go check that out if you can. Give her a like and subscribe, and uh, I'm sure you'll be pleased with what you see coming out of her her YouTube. So I know it's so, silly, Jason, but like <clears throat> there's sometimes I don't know. Sometimes I don't know what to Google. I, did you hear my <laughs> shout out in there? Of like I cannot for the yep. life of me figure out your bubble <laughs> levels. What the heck that thing is called? But like just simple things like the hex wrenches for the screws on the Stanley. If you don't know what you're looking for. Like if you don't know the name of that, it's the, so some of those things that maybe seem a little excessive in some of these videos, I just try to think about what are things that might save someone, even if it's, you know, five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Themselves. Yeah. I mean, I love the way you do your videos just, and we'll talk more, just kind of, we're going to kind of go through the, 
the the breakdown everything and then she'll she'll take over and start talking about other things but one of the things i like i've liked about you since i don't even know how long ago a couple of years at least um is just the way you present the information um you're very bubbly and joyful and kind of, <laughs> kind of playful at sometimes and things like that so it's it's just for me that's the kind of content that i like i don't like to watch people that are just kind of like monotone and just feel like they're reading from a script, even though you, you may or may not at points have a little script there to follow. Yeah. You make, you make it kind of interactive and entertaining, even though you're the only one on the screen. So thank uh, you. I appreciate so, that. Hey everybody. I got, we got a question here, I guess. Yep. Well, well, we'll take questions as they go, but we're, sure. we're going to give Katie about 20 minutes or so to kind of break down the nuances of, of doing raps. But the first question we have is from uh, Belinda. Uh, I would love some help on taper design to actually go on, or actually to go onto a cremation urns, typical flat surfaces, no typical yeah. flat surfaces. Yeah. So, so there, let's start with that one and then we'll talk more about the wraps. So mm -hmm. a couple of things, if you're working in light burn that, that new, I was playing with the taper warp feature. Have you played with that yet, Jason? Oh yeah. Yeah. I did a little short video on a, our YouTube. Um, okay. It's actually pretty, pretty useful. It's super useful. And it's really good yep. for things like if you're just doing a one sided thing. So if you think about, I have a tumbler, hold on, let me get it off screen for a second. Sorry. <laughs> Cool. You'll remember this one from LBX, right? Oh, yep, yep. Your so if you think about these the these little ovals on the bottom, those are actually circles in the design. So because <laughs> of and these rectangles are squares in the design. So if you just think about the way that um because that that size is so much smaller, it's getting compressed, but that's different than how you get the circles that look like little eggs. Yeah. If you're just doing that taper, which that taper warp is really good for stuff like that, like logos and things that are going to go on even just a, oh, I'm out of focus. Sorry. <laughs> um, microphone in the way. Um, even just things All like, fancy. gosh, it just does not want to focus <laughs> when the, when the microphone gets in the way. It's because I have that product thing on my camera, you know, like the makeup people have. Oh, the ring where you like, no, where you like put the thing in front of you and then, and then you have to cover your eyes and it'll focus. Uh, yeah. So I have to turn that off on my camera. Anyway. <laughs> um, so the taper warp is really good for something. If you're just doing something on, um, one, like one part of the surface, not a full wrap. I haven't tested it out with a full wrap yet. Um, because I, I don't know that it's really intended for that, but I will play around with that. Um, but definitely if the, the shape of the urn, depending on if you're going to put it, if it's like a, if I think of an urn, I think it's probably more like this, right? It's skinny yeah. and then wide and then skinny, depending on where the logo and the design is going to be placed, that taper warp might be helpful, but not if it's in that full, like right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, the, for the wraps, I think like, again, I haven't done them, but um, for the wraps, I think it would work really well. Um, with the taper warp, just for the simple fact that, like you, sh like you showed there, yeah, you know the top, the tops round, and then it gets progressively more egg shaped as you go down. Yeah. So it should, in theory, work because it it keeps the same design size. Yep. But in light burn, it looks like it's not. So yeah, it's cool. It distorts. It's it's, it's kind of confusing. Um. Because the taper, the, where the taper is, you want the object to be bigger. And right. that's why it, it gets bigger as the taper goes down and opposite if you do it the other way. Right. It's the um, inverse of what you expect. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. I know it works on the big 40 ounces because I've done it. Um, nice. Not, not all the way. Well, I use it, the, the Polar Camel, which have a little oh, yeah. bit more of it. They have a little bit more of a taper, I think, than the Stanleys do. Um, so I've done that in that open area there and it works really well. So I can't imagine that it wouldn't work the full length. Now, um, with urns, I've had several experiences with the, the round urns, like you're describing where it's kind of small at the top, it bulges out and then it yeah. narrows back down. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that's what she's referring to. Um, let us know if, if that is, but what I've done is I typically use the four inch lens. Yeah. on on like my nova 24 or my 63 
Um, I've done it on the Odin 32 with the two inch lens, but okay. you, you have to make your, your engraved area smaller. Yeah. Um, if you're trying to do a full wrap of some sort, I would basically level the flattest, the flattest part of it, yep. like where, where it rounds over and then starts to taper down to the narrow end. I would use that section there to, to, um, to, to kind of get you, well, your focus and the taper warp. Oh, okay. Um, I, I would see. use that, you know, how it says, you know, pick your, your opening yep. at the top, yep. at the bottom, and then the yep. length of it. So you'd use the widest part of the urn as your top point, and then the narrowest point of the engravable area is your bottom point, and then measure between those is your length. Yeah. Um, I think it'll work. I'm not 100% sure I haven't done that on urns. I did um, it on a, like a wine tumbler, so that like inverted shape. Like this isn't right, obviously, because it's stainless steel, but like that same kind yep. of shape. I did Same one concept. and I did that. Yeah. That where that wider part. Cause basically the urn, if, if what she has is what I think it is, is basically if you took that cup and turned it over, right. It would be the exact same thing. It's, it's going to have some semblance of a flat spot or a fairly flat spot at some point, typically, um, unless it's completely bulbous. And then of course, then there's not, right. um, but you kind of got to stay within, in that engravable area. Yeah. Um, yeah, one more here. Uh, so do you use air assist on tumblers? <laughs> so that's, that's, a, that's a, like that's a debate. That's a debate one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in my opinion, and maybe yours is different is I never turn the air off ever. Yeah. Um, there's for a couple reasons, especially for like the Nova's is as that beams coming out, it's creating heat. And with that heat, it's going to create a circulation of air, even though there's no air coming out. And that could pull debris and stuff up into the nozzle, which could damage the nozzle. Plus, the air also acts as cooling. Right. Um, because the, the lens is encapsulated, so there's no – it's not like an Odin or the bolt where the lens is fairly exposed. Right. And it's moving so fast, it's kind of cooling itself already, whereas – in a nozzle, you have a very confined space with a lot of heat so that air helps to keep that cool to prevent damage to the lens. Um, so I don't know if you kind of have the same perspective on that or not, but that's that's my general rule of thumb is I never turn it off. I'll turn it way down yeah. <laughs> to like two two to five PSI, yeah. somewhere, somewhere in that range. Um, well, so in that dual, yeah. you can just use the – I mean, it's it's – shows it's off but it's using using the low right yeah, yeah. in the nova that's what i do because you definitely yeah. I, like well one you don't want to burn that powder coat back on <laughs> yeah right? yeah so well, that, well the air does help with that too it helps to to clear the area yeah. the as it engraves over. yeah um because i have noticed between the nova and the odin the odin always leaves a dark and the same thing with the bolt it yep. always yeah. leaves a dark residue behind because yeah. the air is kind of coming at it at an angle. It's not really going down and kind of dispersing um, the material. So you'll tend to see like a dark, it'll, it'll be like a light yeah. to, to dark <laughs> as it moves away from yeah. the tip of the nozzle. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty common and there's nothing really you can do about that. But yeah, turn it, the air assist when tumblers, yeah, I would always use it because it's not going to hurt anything. Right. Um, it, it's not going to hurt a single thing to leave it on. It's not like acrylic um, where yeah. you're gonna like blast that. Yeah, acrylic is is very crucial with the air. You got to find a good balance, otherwise you'll get that kind of frosted rim at yeah. the very top, and then it'll be clear at the bottom because that's where the air is hitting it. It's cooling it before it has a chance to, or it's it's spattering it more or less, or dragging that material down, which causes that that cloudy yeah, that, um, that hazy edge thing. on it. Yep. Yeah. That doesn't look great. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, good question. So, no more questions on here right now. So, if okay. I'll go ahead and turn it over to you if you want to go ahead and talk about the wraps, because I know that's what a lot of people want to see in here. So, sure. So, I think the you. the biggest thing that I will say is that if you are just starting out, the I would say start with what I like to call a loose design. Um, I don't really know a better word to describe it, but. <laughs> 
not anything, you know, a lot of the, the wrap designs that you'll buy, and I'll be very careful about this, is they, they will be something that someone has done that's seamless and they'll have cut the design like right in the middle, right? So they'll, yeah. they'll create the design and then they'll cut it. And if your seam doesn't line up perfectly, and I mean perfectly, you're going to notice it. So I would avoid those kind of wraps for your first wraps. Um, one thing I talk a lot about in, if I'm designing, I like to actually, because the, the, um, the rotary and the, and light burn don't know where your tumbler starts and stops, right? It doesn't, that bounding box that you make, that's the size of the cup. That's the circumference. It doesn't know that that exists. So I tend to have my designs actually run over that on one side. So if it's something where I would like someone else might cut it and put, like half of a flower on one side and half of the flower on the other side, I'll just let the flower run over so that I don't have That's to worry one. about it getting split and needing to line back up. Cause there's no reason your, your tumbler can turn more than 360 degrees and engrave more than that. As long as you've planned the design that way. Um, so I think those loose designs where it doesn't, it doesn't have to be as precise at first will help you be more confident because just getting the focus, that focal distance, and the tilt on something like a Stanley, just getting those things is challenging enough to start off with. And then adding in that, making sure that it's actually perfect every time. I try to say, do that later and get more comfortable <laughs> with doing that as you go. Um, you and I talked a lot about steps for rotation and circumference and how. what do you test every time? And I always test a new design. So I try to not um, change my steps. So in the in the Talon, with the Talon, I haven't changed the steps at all. It's just at 8,200. And then I'm just messing with the circumference of the cup. Mm -hmm. And then when we've talked with the, with the Junior, generally my steps are pretty much the same, but I do test them on each new cup style. But then I always test the design, either with <laughs> painter's tape, or just test the edges and just make sure that where it's coming in that one, I like the scale. So I will have a lot of times I'll have something that looks good on the screen and then I'll get it on the cup and I'm like, Ooh, that's too small or it's too big. Or it's just like, I don't love the way it looks. So I always test with painter's tape and always do at least just a quick check. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt you to do a little 50 millimeter box and make sure that you're set at 50 millimeters. And you know, usually I'll find that I made some silly error, like forgetting to change my circumference of my cup in my settings. Yeah. That's usually how I find something like that is doing that quick test. I also highly recommend having a delay set on your machine. <laughs> if you don't have a 15 second delay set, set that because frequently you'll forget that you set an origin somewhere and you'll go and you'll see where the, where the head traveled to. And you're like, Oh crap. That's not where I wanted to start. I gotta fix that. And you have time to start to stop it if you have a delay set. So I think yep. those are important starter tips. Yeah, I like I like the the tip about making the design actually overlap into itself. Yeah. Um, because I mean that especially with technical designs. I mean, there's some people, and I think you've done them as well, um, where they you get them to butt up to get together. Um. But like you said, it's it's very hard to do. Uh, whereas with the overlap, it's an awesome idea to to basically just extend it a little bit. That way, if it engraves it, if it engraves over, it's not going to do anything. It's just going right. to continue that design and not have a seam at all. And the way so, yeah. that I check that is that I just take another version of that same design and just stack them on each other. Yep. Because then I know, okay, none of my elements are going to bump into each other. And then I don't have to worry about it. And it just, that saves me so many headaches because I don't have to think about it instead of being like, because then you can be a couple millimeters off. But if you have one of those designs, that's like, it has to be exactly, exactly right. And even we've talked about it. If you're doing that test with painter's tape, you might be adding a millimeter <laughs> with that yeah. painter's tape. And so then when you go to run it, you're like, oh, I'm off by a millimeter. That's <laughs> not good. You don't well, that's that. what a lot of a lot of people don't take that into consideration is, you know, on a roller um, or even with a chuck for that matter, you know, having 
you know, some people put painter's tape and then they put a foil tape and then they put more painter's tape. Right. I mean, you're, you're adding to the, to the circumference of that cup. Right. So you might get it dead on, but once you take all that stuff back off, right. I mean, you're, you're messing with the design and chances are it's not going to line up. Right. Um, but that's where like I, I was, I held a, like a training session with somebody the other day and, and I told her, I said, just grab a cup, do your design and then spray paint over it yeah and then and then redo it until you get it right for that particular type of cup obviously stanley's that's a sensitive topic because they're so ex- <laughs> they're so expensive they're so expensive um, but um having a, a dedicated cup that you can actually test on without having to tape it and everything right. is is you know it's the cost of doing business i mean if you want to yeah. do it right and you want to eliminate any doubts or uh, potential issues or things like that. It's worth it to have a cup dedicated to do those kind of tests on. Yeah. Um, because I don't know how many times I've got questions like, oh, I did I did my, my test on tape and it worked fine. I took it off and it's off. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, <laughs> there's, there's a big reason for that. And that's the circumference has changed and yeah. it's, it's just the nature of the beast. So, yeah. But yeah. I also, um, oh, I forgot. I was going to say something else. About, oh, I also think that that's one great thing about you offering a Chuck style rotary now, because that does give you a little more room to make mistakes and make them fixable because you can start from the same position or run again. Um, I've added things to my designs because I'm like, oh, I actually wish that I had like one or two more elements after it's yeah. finished and I can easily do that. Where on a roller, that would have been a little bit more challenging. Like, could have figured it out, but it yeah. would have been a little more difficult. Yeah, the Chuck is definitely, uh, for stuff like that, is, is definitely, I guess, more the way to go. I mean, the rollers can do it fine. People have been doing it for for a couple of years just yeah. fine. Um, but a lot of it has to do with your, your settings on the axis that it's driving on. Um, you definitely want okay. to slow things slow thing down a little bit. Um, I got a video on YouTube for it on how to change your, your settings. It's easier with Thunder because Thunder uses a separate axis mm-hmm. and it doesn't it doesn't affect the Y, whereas a lot of people that have a Y axis that runs a rotary making those changes will slow down your frame speed when you do flat material. Um, okay. so, so typically for those situations, I would tell someone, hey, go ahead and set it up for a rotary. Save that profile. Um, cause in the machine settings, you can save the file and you can put that rotary settings or rotary yeah. uh, baseline and then do the same thing for flat and save it for flat material. That way, when you're going back and forth, you don't have to remember what you set it to before and you're not affecting the Y cause you just load that file for the flat and you're, you're back to square one and everything's working the way it should. But when you switch to rotary, it slows everything down and, you don't have to mess with that. So, Smart. so with the roller, that's how you kind of combat that issue with potential slipping and being able to do repeat stuff. Yeah. Um, whereas with the Chuck, it's a little bit more forgiving. Yeah. Um, as far as that goes and granted it can still slip, you know, depending on how fast you're moving it because the, the grip pads, are rubber and they're sitting on a post. <laughs> right. So if you, if you go too fast and, and inertia keeps the cup spinning a little bit, it could potentially turn a millimeter or something. Okay. Not, not as likely. Um, but it is still a possibility, but the Chuck is definitely for stuff like that is the way to go, especially with Galvo. Cause Galvo is getting really, really big. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. With, with, really yeah. 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 It's only been, I don't know, year and a half. And things just kind of blew up with with that, and uh, and that was kind of one of the reasons why I went to a Chuck, okay. Um, because you know obviously the the market is there for it for those type of machines, and that's what is best suited for, in my opinion, um, because you can do a lot of stuff like the cross hatching, like the video you did um, a while yeah. back. Um, so you can add a lot of different features to it. You can go back and re engrave or. Um, you can do all kinds of different stuff and not really have to worry about it. Whereas with the CO2, if you're just doing basic stuff or even wraps for that matter, a roller's fine as well. So it's, it's, it's nice to have both of them. 
Um, it is. I mean, I would say if you can't afford both, the, the Chuck is probably your best bet for an all-around best case. Yeah. Um, but if you're in a production setting where you're trying to pump out a lot of stuff, the Chuck is a little bit takes a little bit longer to set up um, and make yeah. sure everything's right and level and and the cup sitting correctly, things like that. Whereas a roller, you just throw it in. Yeah. Let go. Let go of the clamp. Hit start. I mean, it's so there, there's two two different use cases for it. But if if you had your hands tied and don't have a lot of money, a chuck is probably your best your best bet in that situation. And um, then you'd say get your chuck and then invest in some backups of <laughs> all the cups <laughs> that you want to do. I mean, yep. I will say I, people want to do a lot of like the um, unbranded Amazon stuff as starters. Yep. And while I do think there's some cases that that makes sense, it your consistency is going to be terrible. So trying to know what you're getting and what to expect of each cup, I feel like I like, you know, if I'm doing, if I'm doing tumblers for with logos or something, I like the JDS ones. So if I can sell somebody yeah. on the JDS ones, I know what I'm getting. I know they're going to be consistent. I know I can get them fast. I know what my colors are <laughs> and I can mess one up. And I, you know, another one's not going to break the bank if I make a mistake and yeah. I can do, you know, I've sacrificed a few that are like full settings tests, right? Like, yep. Oh, made a mistake on that water bottle. Okay. That water bottle is the blue powder coat test. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, the whole thing is covered in squares and numbers. And um, so the, it's a place to, it, it's worth the investment, I think, of getting a few to sacrifice and just plan for that in budgeting for doing tumblers. Yeah, definitely. But like I said, usually one cup is enough. Um, yes. Because a lot of times, like I said, if even on the stainless steel, bare stainless steel ones, you can just paint it with, with yep. uh, I, I use high temp engine paint just because it's a little bit more durable. Okay. Um, because like you your auto stores, auto stores, uh, Lowe's, places like that. Um, I just use the the high temp um paint just because, like I said, it adheres really well to the metal. It doesn't need a primer, and then, like I said, you can just keep going over it every time you want to test something. Just yeah. spray paint it and keep going that way you're not wasting a bunch of cups and stuff yeah trying to trying to do different things um but uh i don't have a good non-jds recommendation really yeah so what brand do you recommend uh if you hate the ribs on jds um i mean i'll be honest like for me i hated them when they first came out <laughs> like i thought they were just horrible but it's kind of grown on me <laughs> a little bit because it's it's, it's different, yeah. you know. Um, a lot of people don't like it. I mean, really, the if you're trying to get wholesale, um, Arctic might deal with you. Uh, Yeti, okay. if Yeti, if they know that you're engraving on it, they will not deal with you. Um, you can find somebody that that distributes and wholesales them. Um, and that's what I've done before, but I refuse to do it anymore. So if anybody wants stuff like that, I just make them supply it. Um, which back to the point of test cups, <laughs> um, kind of lends to a little bit more risk, yeah. but you know, that's kind of what my local business model is with doing stuff is, is I'll typically do the things that nobody else will do. Um, <laughs> I'm not afraid to take a chance, but I make it abundantly clear one, if they're going to bring me something of their own, they have to bring an extra. Yeah. Um, not that I'm going to mess it up, but things can happen yep. or I can get the settings wrong or something like that. And so I always make sure that they have an extra. And if they don't, I just let them know, look, you know, things can go wrong. We're not going to intentionally screw your stuff up. But, <laughs> you know, if, if you're okay with it and you're willing to accept that risk, then I'm willing to do it. Yeah. You know, so I, I just make sure that the customer is very clear on, on, uh, on how things kind of go with that. Um, that way they can't come back and say, Oh, well you messed it up. You owe me a cup. Well, that's why a they of... charge so much on, for Stanley's on Etsy is because they basically charge for, if they had to replace that color, 
Mm -hmm. And in a lot of cases, you can't get some of those colors anymore. So you'll see like engraved Stanleys for like $300. Yeah. Well, and that's where people, I think, go wrong because one, you can't, you can't charge based on that. Right. You're, you'll potentially run yourself out of business, yeah. and and two, um, it's just, to me it's just not very practical, right? Um, because and that's the same on the same lines as you know if you have a a diode laser that takes you a half hour to do a name or something, you know you can't you can't charge the typical dollar per minute right. that most lasers do, um just because your machine isn't sufficient to do the job quickly and, and efficiently. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of a toss up. And a lot of people lately have been asking about, you know, what do you charge for tumblers? Like, like Katie, she's in New Jersey, correct? Yep. So, and I'm in Florida. So. I charge if, more if, probably. <laughs> probably. I mean, I charge quite a bit. I mean, I charge, yeah. well, for a JDS, I charge $45. Yeah. Um, for like a 30 ounce. Yeah. Um, and not to say that they're flying off the shelf, but you know, I'm not going to sacrifice one, the quality and two, my pricing just because, you know, they tell me that they can get it off Etsy for 20 bucks, yeah. you know, go, go ahead. You know, you'll see what you're going to get and go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it, you don't want to put yourself you don't want to pigeonhole yourself or, or put yourself in a position where um, you're going to basically either price yourself out of business or get a bad rap because you over promise and under deliver um, things like that. So just I some think, things to take into account. Yeah. I think too, in that same kind of idea, we've talked a lot about, you know, in different places, just, making sure one of the things I think as people are learning to do their tumblers is learning all the different skills that it's taking to do that. Right. Not just, that's why talking about the design, if you learn how to do something like that design that spills over and you understand conceptually how that works, that's going to translate into other things that you're going to be able to do. If suddenly the rap trend is not what's driving your business anymore. So you're going to understand and have that skill set of how to use your laser to accomplish something, which is always, I think, my goal. And I think, you know, your goal is to help people understand how and why they're doing something, right? Is then you have that skill set to creatively come up with something different or to try something new or to be able to know how your how your machine works and why it's doing the things it's doing, rather than like okay, I bought this design and it doesn't work and I'm just going to scrap it or whatever that is. I think those, those things help you to make sure that you have a continual sustained business. Oh, Jason froze. Uh Oh, <laughs> oh, there he yeah. is. Yeah. I, I lost, I lost connection. Still <laughs> says. I hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Did you hear what uh, I was saying about? No, I okay. it cut off right right as soon as you started talking. It cut off. I went on a passionate speech, Jason. But I was I'm just saying, we, you and I talk a lot about like how we are always trying to help people understand how, like the how and the why of what they're doing. Like, mm -hmm. why do I do this thing with my machine, and why is this important, and what do I need to understand to make it do the thing I want it to do, rather than you know spoon feeding like settings because they're not going to be the same for everybody. And they're not going to be the same, even with the same machine, same tube, same cup, it could still be different because yep. there's just different factors. It was a very passionate speech. Yes, it was. Um, and those skills, no, <laughs> those skills that you're learning by doing these things, if for some reason the, you know, the wrap tumbler thing is not your thing next year, you have skills to be able to translate them into something else to continue to grow and sustain your business. Yeah. And the, the big thing about that is, is like you said, learning skills. Um, yeah. I, I've been doing this almost 10 years, like we talked about before. And, you know, sadly I haven't done wraps, but that's okay. It's not, it's not something I care to really get into, but, yeah. but, um, but having the skills to do that will one, make you more comfortable with yes. what you're doing 
Um, and two, it'll open you up to other things like me. We, we specialize in like just crazy off the wall stuff. Like I'll try my best not to turn anybody away. Um, and as long as there is like, I just did a, like a, it looked kind of like an oversized spittoon, but it was like a, like a rounded something <laughs> with a, with a lid on it. And they wanted writing on the front and the back. And actually, I'll have a video coming out about that once my editor gets done with it. Um, but that was completely a crapshoot. I didn't know what laser to use. I didn't know <laughs> what settings to use. I didn't right. know anything. But we ended up using the UV because it was stainless steel. Um, and we can get a nice black engraving with the UV on the stainless steel without having sprays and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so, you know, things like that, the skills that you learn, like she said, um, may not correlate to wraps and such anymore, but it'll definitely help you kind of understand more how things work. It'll, it'll make you understand your laser better, your rotary yeah. better. Um, so anything you can do to push yourself, like try to, try to get out of your comfort zone, um, when you're, when you're doing stuff like that. And here I am talking about comfort zones and <laughs> I won't get it out of mine. You, it also <laughs> makes you super confident about the, the like easy things. Right. So, yep. you know, I, I did just like for a charity donation last week, it was like, wow, I just did like seven tumblers in the time it takes to do a wrap because I was just putting like a name on them. And it was so easy. And it was all different sizes and all different things. And it was like, boom, 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 because I knew how to, position the ori the origin and get everything set up really fast and then they yep. were done in like three minutes each it's like this is great love it but the downside of that is and i actually had this happen you were talking about making sure that you reset your origin and your yeah. your your object <laughs> diameter second delay jason it <laughs> saved my butt more times than i can count um i was at uh, a big event as a three-day event um down in, uh, south of me in florida and we had so many orders coming in. I was trying to pump them out as fast as I could. And I went from doing a 20 ounce cup to doing a 32 ounce dog bowl. <laughs> and I didn't change the steps. Ooh. So it was, it was very elongated, <laughs> but it worked because the customer, because the dog bowl only had about two inches of height to engrave on. So the, yeah. the, the, the brand was really small. So yeah. when it elongated it, it obviously made it a little bit bigger and it actually turned out really well, thankfully. Yeah. But you know, the, that was just luck, I guess that yeah. it turned out the way it did. Cause it could have went the other way. Right. Um, so being mindful of, of that, cause you, you get complacent, especially if you're doing a lot of like totally. stuff over and over and over and over again, you get really complacent. Uh, so just kind of taking it back and just, regroup a little bit because after that I had, I had i was like all right i gotta slow down because <laughs> i don't want to ruin anything um, i did a bunch of water bottles at christmas last year for a soccer team and yeah. it was a it was a logo that was definitely like you could tell if it was squished and i had done a bunch and then and i was using the junior and i set one on like the neck instead of the neck riding on the wheels I actually ended up having the water bottle right on the wheels. <laughs> and so instead of it being like this wide, it was like this wide. And I was like, oh. and I was running Oops. low on water bottles. It was, you know, it was one of those Christmas fun things that happens. But so yeah, I yeah. still make plenty of mistakes. It, it happens to the best of us. Yeah. And I'm, I'm by no, no, I'm by no means an expert. You know, if you're not learning something, you're not, doing anything for yourself as far as the business goes. Um, so you should be learning something as you go, whether it's, you know, tweaking power or speed or yeah. your, the diameter of things or the steps or just whatever. I mean, as long as you're learning something, I think you, you'll continue to grow. I've been learning all about ramp tests. I've been <laughs> trying to learn that recently. Yeah. I'd, I've <laughs> done that. I've done that once and I did it on the bolt. Um, it's okay. I mean, it's it hel It's very helpful because um, I wanted to reset my focus, yeah. uh, which you can do in Lightburn. 
you know, once you do your ramp test, you can go into light burn under rotary setup or rotary or machine settings under rotary autofocus or not rotary, but under the autofocus, you can actually adjust that number based on your ramp test. Yeah. Um, so you can make changes if necessary. Uh, mine was a little bit off for my liking. I wanted it to be a little bit finer. Yeah. So I was trying to, I was trying to fine tune it a little bit. Um, because the design I was working on had a lot of detail in it and yeah. I wanted to make sure that I got all that detail. So I wanted to get that beam as, as fine as I could possibly get it. Um, and it worked. And that's probably the first and only time I've done, I've done it in all this time. Cause usually I just, I'll use autofocus. I'll have a piece of material. that's the thickness that I need. I'll set it on it, drop the nozzle and, you know, go to town. Yeah. But obviously with the bolt and the Odin 32, you can't do that because there is no nozzle to base everything off of. Right. I mean, they give you that little hanger tool um, that's supposed to fall off when you reach your focus, but you know, certain situations it's not feasible, but yeah. Um, so you got a user, what kind of dog bowls do you like the best? I don't know. Have you done a lot of dog bowls? I haven't done a lot. No, no. I've only used the JDS ones. I've, yeah, I like the. Go ahead. I I haven't put a Yeti in there yet. Yeah, I've done I've done the JDS, which I prefer, like you said, because if I mess it up, I just grab another one and I can go. Yeah. Um, I've used the ones off of Amazon, uh, and they've actually been really well. I don't have the link for it. I might be able to find it and throw it in the chat. Um, but uh, I've used those. They're really good. They're about. I would say the the coating and stuff is about similar or the same as as the uh, JDS. Um, so it engraves really well. Actually, I think one of the videos that I posted about the dog bowls, I think was one of those, uh, not a hundred percent sure I had to look, look back at that, but anyways, um, so I, I would say I stick with JDS because it's easy for me to get, I got a warehouse 20 minutes, not even 20 minutes from my shop that I can go get, with, I can go get within an hour, you know, um, if they have it in stock and, like you said, you can just grab one off the shelf and redo it. You know, you're, you're out like seven to ten dollars, depending on what it is, versus thirty to whatever for a Yeti or Arctic or something like that that you can't you can't easily replace. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't say that I have a favorite, but the best ones that I've found are the JDS just because consistency. Yeah. Just like their cups, it's 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 similar to the cups, and I use the same settings for all. The only ones I bump my power up for is like Ye uh, Yetis and Arctic because typically they're a little bit thicker coating. Thicker, yeah. Um, and Stanleys, Stanleys yeah. at least like the thermoses and their their smaller cups and stuff. The coating on that I think is more like a. I don't I don't even know. It's like concrete. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 like I've done thermoses with that kind of eggshell coating on them. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? The old style yeah. thermoses with like the eggshell type coating. I've done several yeah. of those and, you know, it it's a crapshoot. But typically for anything other than JDS, I'll bump my power up like 5 or 10%. Um, because as long as you don't go too hot, then right. you're not going to really Lower damage risk. the cup. Right. Yeah, your lower risk of one, not completely engraving through, and two, yep. you're not necessarily going to burn through the metal. Um, so, it, and of course, that depends on your laser power. If you got 130 watt, you can't use the same settings as you do on a 60 watt. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I did I did that. By the way, <laughs> can you actually? Can, you can't actually with a CO2. Could you actually burn the metal? You can burn it. You can't. It won't engrave it. It'll tarnish. It'll turn it like a brown, hazy okay. color. You you won't be able to engrave into it. But right. if you use enough power on like a raw Stanley Stanley stainless steel, yeah, it'll it'll actually tarnish it like a bronze color, okay. like a light light gray to brown color. Um. So yes, you can burn it, but it won't engrave it. So it. as long as a lot of times, a lot of, if you're doing like a repeat engrave yeah. uh, you don't have to worry about like bumping down your power or anything because you've already used the power the power's 
it's not going to hurt anything to go over with the same power. Um, now, if you do that many, many times, that may vary. But, you know, in my <laughs> experience, just running the same power a second time. Yeah. Um, a lot of times I'll do it on like black, white, and like yeah, white is tough. Pink, pink or red. Um, white, yeah, white's the worst. Um, and white, no matter what I've ever done on a single pass, it always leaves a heavy black uh, soot where you engraved it, and you're like, oh crap, I just ruined this cup. Yeah. And then and then you clean it off, and it's like, wow, this thing's like perfect. So it's don't don't let don't let or just general for everybody don't let that kind of discourage you when you see that because it's it is fairly normal it's common yeah. um so do you have a favorite cleaner of the ones that people like um i use a duramark blue yeah. that's kind of that's my go-to um i've heard the heavy degreaser from like harbor freight or something like that's really well uh also i've used denatured alcohol works really well okay. um you just got to be careful like with that I know of for a fact, JDS, Arctic, Yeti, and Stanley, they're pretty durable as far as what chemicals you can use on them. Yep. Um, I did some cheap stuff off Amazon that somebody brought to me, and it engraved fine. But when I went to clean it off, it actually removed the paint <laughs> or started oh. to remove the, remove the paint from it. And I'm like, uh, yeah, this, this isn't going to work. Um, but luckily I, I have a vinyl printer. I cut out the name or the names that they wanted on it and I put it right over, <laughs> right over it. So it kind of covered it up. And that you was, go. you know, talking with the customer. I'm like, Hey, look, this isn't going to work. I did one. I tried to clean it up and I showed her a picture. I'm like, the paint just smears right off of it. Um, and she was like, okay, well let's do, can you do vinyl? I'm like, yes. So we went ahead and did that. She was happy with it. And, you know, so you always got to be careful. They're not all the same. Right. And, and again, if you have it, that's a good reason to have a test cup because yeah. you can do your, you can do your first cup, clean it up, make sure everything's going to work the way it should. And then you can proceed with the rest of them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, someone says I, di I discovered blue and love it. Um, I for some reason thought it was expensive and then I was looking at it today. No. And I was like, oh, it's really not. I'm going to get some. I guess like six. There. 600 millimeter or milliliter bottle is like 20, $25. Yeah, okay. And that stuff, that stuff, like you don't have to douse it either. Like I see a lot of people use it and they're like, Ch -ch -ch. they're <laughs> spraying the crap out of the cup. And literally like power wash you, is just fun. <laughs> <laughs> all you need to do is just spritz it. Like just get okay. the surface, just get the surface wet. You'll almost immediately see the, the residue just melt off the cup. And that's where like the heavy degreaser, Alicia, uh, Pate uses that a lot okay. and, you know, but she just, ch -ch 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 -ch. and that's, that's fine. Cause I mean, a gallon of it's only like 10 bucks right. in it. <laughs> and if, if, if it's diluted, it'll do like 300 and something gallons worth of cleaner. Um, but obviously if you use it full strength, um, you know, it won't last that long. Right. Um, Lou says, I think he's asking what, about that heavy degree, sir. I don't know. Yeah, what is it? If you're talking about the blue, it's from Enduramark. Um, they sell out of it like crazy. So last time I bought it, I bought a case of like four <laughs> um, of the 600 milliliter bottles. Um, if you're talking about the, oh, he's talking about the blue. Yep. I think I can get a link. So it's Enduramark Blue B L U. Um, yeah, if you if you got a link there, you can drop yep. it in there. Um, but use that in full strength. Like I said, it's just a, a light mist. Um, but with any of these chemicals that you use to clean your cups, the number one thing is like with blue, I use after I clean it with blue, I'll hit it with um, a spray bottle with uh, full of water and like two or three drops of Dawn dish soap. Um, and I do that because. I found that using it, if you leave it on there and don't wash it off, it will start to fade the coating. Um, so with the soap and water, it kind of neutralizes the acidity of of the um, of the the chemical, <laughs> and also it helps to clean it off after you you done scrubbed. Because I'll, I'll do it with the blue, I'll scrub it, 
I'll wipe it off and then I'll spritz it with the water bottle and then I'll wipe that off and then I I'm done. Um, and I haven't had any issues with that, doing it that way. Um, but if anybody's interested, the, the heavy degreaser, um, it's like a yellowish, like a dark yellow, almost like slime color, that yellow <laughs> slime stuff about that color. Um, <laughs> but you can get that from Harbor Freight. It's like 10, 10 or $11 for a gallon of it. Um, you can dilute it if you want, or you can run it high strength or, or full strength as well. But, uh, um, but those are the two that I would say are kind of, I don't, I don't, I don't use the heavy degreaser, so I can't say <laughs> it's a go-to. I know people that have used it. I use denatured alcohol or blue and 99% of the time I use blue and it, it's, it works great. I, it you know. is fun watching the, like the powder, the powder coat residue just kind of just melt. Off and then <laughs> it's all shiny underneath. Yep. I do keep some barkeepers friend on hand too, though. Sometimes if like I need to shine up the, the stainless steel underneath. Is that that like cleaner polish or something? Oh, it's a yeah, powder. Like, you can get a, a, like a creamy one, but you can get a powder and you just make like a paste. Mm, okay. Um, but I've ha I had it in the house for other things because you can use it on like yeah tarnish on silver or whatever, but it works oh. on that stainless steel if you have if you're finding that it's like not very shiny, okay. even if you got the powder coat off, but that's like it's not shiny. You can use that to make it shinier. It polishes it up nicely. Um, I've heard of that stuff, but I've never seen it, so I didn't know what exactly it was. I thought it was probably another spray or something, but. No, there's like a cream one and then like the powder one that I use. That doesn't mess with the, the powder coating? Mm -mm. Or the no? Might hmm. mm -mm. have to look into that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Although we got... acetone, if you, you know, the oh. worst case scenario, if you didn't get something off, the acetone will do it, but. It'll take it all off. <laughs> yeah, it'll take it all off. You gotta be real careful there. I've had um, to do that sometimes like with a maroon like I'll have like a little bit of maroon residue on like a bit, you know, like a really big name or something where you've got like a big space. Yeah. And that's just easy. Like on a Q-tip, a little bit of acetone and clean that up. Yeah. Like he says, it's a little goes a long way. Yeah. And that's especially, I mean, like I said, it's not that expensive, but um, definitely it's better to keep money in your pocket than yeah. just to wash it down the drain literally. So uh, so we got about 10 minutes left. I don't know if you wanted to cover anything else with the wraps as far as some tips and tricks. I do know, um, like for me with the bubble level, like yeah. I'll level the, I'll level the cup first and then I'll basically put it to where the bubble moves over and touches the line. That's smart. Um, and some people have those electronic um, levels and yeah. you set it, set it up on the gantry, you zero it out and then you put it on your cup. If you level it and then you go about three, three to four degrees with the Stanley's in particular, you'll get about the perfect tilt, huh. um, to get, to get the, the stuff done. So basically, like you said, you auto focus from the center, like you said in your video, auto focus yep. in the center on the main body and then from there you'll tilt tilt the cup after yep. it's level you'll tilt the cup and then from from that point you basically redo your well I would redo the autofocus at the center point and then defocus into it a little bit yep. that way that way the high spots low and the low spots are high yeah or the high spots low and the low spots are high so it's kind of evenly like the ends are at five millimeters in right. the center or in the centers at like three yeah. or four. <laughs> it gets really I mean, close. <laughs> it sound it's counterproductive or counterintuitive, I guess, yeah. but um I mean that's just the way it works. And I think you use the four inch lens on that video that you did, did. if I if I saw yeah. that correctly. Um but the unfortunate thing about that is it has the same focus height um as everything else if I'm not mistaken. I don't have one so I can't speak to that. Is that true? The four inches longer. But is your focal distance longer as well? 
Or is it just because the mirror is set in a different position? Oh, right. With the, with the probe. Well, with the bolt in particular. Yeah. With the autofocus probe. No, you're right. It's the same. Yeah. It's so, of- but with the Nova, obviously it's different. Yeah. Um, so a six millimeter for a two inch on a four inch, I think you're around and- 11, 10, 11, somewhere around yeah. in that ballpark. Um, so obviously that's the better way to go as far as getting clearance. Yeah. Um, but it seems like from the video, you pretty much got kind of a, a little knack to getting that to where everything clears. Um, I literally just, I'm like, okay, does it clear? <laughs> and then I just, and as long as I, I get this sort of the same, like even um, engraving on the painter's tape with like at 16 power, you know, really light power. And it's, not like really dull in one spot and really bright in another spot. I know it's going to be fine. Yeah. That's, that's what I was saying. You get, you're basically putting, you're putting everything out of focus. Yes. <laughs> but you're, but you're trying to do it in a balanced way to where <laughs> the, the, the shorter focus is just as out of focus as the outer focus. Yes. So that way it's, if it's out of focus, it's going to be consistent. It's not going to be like really sharp on one end and kind of dull and right. distorted on the other. It's going to be equally distorted. Um, and that's kind of what your, the goal is, I guess. Right. Um, Cause the thing you don't want to have happen is that your beam is getting super wide. Yeah. Like, especially if you have a design that's very similar top to bottom, like if you were doing some sort of like single line floral kind of thing. And at the yep. top, it was, the beam was really wide. And then at the bottom, it was really thin. That would look really weird. <laughs> and, it, and it happens. I mean, that's part of, you know, testing and trying and, you know, now, figuring granted, out. Most of the time, you're the only one who knows what it was supposed to look like. Yeah. So as long as to the eye, it doesn't look like crazy. You're generally okay. Yeah, it's one of those things. I'm, I'm, I'm really OCD when it comes to detail. Um, and, you know, I, it took me a while to be like you know screw it it's it's good enough <laughs> right it, it, it's not perfect it's not the way i want it but right. like you said most people don't know like a lot of times right. i'll screw i'll screw up on something when a customer comes in be like hey this didn't really come out the way i like it or wanted it and they're like oh my god it's perfect i right. love it like they don't know totally. so it's <laughs> so you know don't don't overthink it just you know obviously if it's if it's that bad then yeah, probably redo it. But yeah. if it's just a little bit off, chances are the, the end user, the customers, are not gonna know the difference. Yeah. Um, and a lot Especially of times, if it's your own unique design, if it's something yeah. that's like their logo, and you can obviously tell, that's different yeah. than something that's like a design you created. It, it show it to somebody else and see if they notice <laughs> your error. And if they don't, then it's probably just a you issue. And yeah. not that you shouldn't have high standards, but don't make yourself crazy. Well, it's like you're looking, I mean, as depending on how you are, like myself, I, I look for problems where problems yeah. prob- probably don't exist just because, right. you know, I want it to be perfect. And I, I've kind of done that with my business is, you know, I don't let junk leave. Um, and, uh, but I've had to kind of, throttle back on that a little bit and i tell people the same thing it's like look you know i understand (laughs) you want it to be perfect but it can't always be perfect there's going to be something something wrong um but as long as it's presentable it looks nice most people aren't going to know and it's not something that's going to detract from the look of it um and you have to think about what's worth what within like the prices that you're charging and the time that you have, what's worth those, you know, those fine tunings, where does it actually make a difference? Where can you get paid for that? And where are you not going to? I mean, if you yeah. think about like not Tumblr related, but if you think about something like keychains where someone might finish with something completely different than someone and in like a listing on Etsy, you can't tell the difference. So someone yep. can't tell why you're charging $18 because you did all these other things to it versus other person charging like eight. So where <laughs> is it going to make sense and how, well, and where are you selling it and how are you presenting it and how are you telling your story? Well, that's why I had a, uh, a guy, he's a, not by trade or not by, um, 
profession, but he's a, um, a uh, what am I trying to say? He's a merchandise person for okay. a famous basketball player. Um, okay. And he came into my shop and he wanted to get some stuff done. I actually posted a video or photos on it before. Some people might understand, but um, he brings a cup. He's like, hey, you do cups, right? I'm like, yeah, we do cups. We do all kinds of stuff. And he was like, can you do this, this design on a cup? And I looked at it. I'm like, oh, my God, what is this? Like he thought it, he thought it was great because what they did is they engraved it and it looks like they washed it off with like soap and water. So it still had the residue in the engraving. Ooh. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, do you mind if I try something real quick? He was like, uh, yeah, sure. What, what you doing? I said, I want to try to clean this up a little bit and see, uh, what's going on here. So I put some blue on it, scrubbed it off and it was just shine, shiny as can be. And I showed it to him. Like, he was like, holy crap. <laughs> like they'd, they'd been buying these thinking that's just what it was. Oh my goodness. And, and when I did that, he was like, holy crap, I'm never using them again. Yeah. <laughs> right. Know? Um, so now I do stuff for him with, with different things, but you know, it's, if people, people only know, and, it, and that's in the laser business and, and running a laser, you only know what you know. Right. Um, so it's not that you're doing it wrong. It's just, you don't know a better way to do it. Right. Uh, or a more efficient way to do it. It's not that you're stupid. It's not right. that you're lazy. It's not, you right. know, unless, unless you are lazy, <laughs> not, maybe not, maybe not stupid, but if you're lazy and you just don't want to clean it off, you know, cause you're trying to pump out all this stuff and you just, you know, that is neglect on, on your behalf. But for the most part, you, you're not going to know what you don't know. Right. Um, and I, and I was the same way when I first started doing uh, cups and things like that. I didn't know you could clean this stuff off. I thought that little tarnished or residue or whatever, that was normal. Yeah. Um, well, I think but, that's what, you know, why I made a point to show, like, this is what it looks like your cup looks like when it comes off a rotary. <laughs> it looks terrible. Don't freak yeah. out. It's okay. It's not going to look like that forever. But yeah. that's part of why I appreciate, like, you and Chris so much is that you guys are really about educating people and helping. And you're always so patient. I mean, I've asked both of you a million questions. <laughs> And you're both so patient and you get asked the same question from different people all the time. So I appreciate that about the two of you. And I'm glad you're doing this. It's definitely tough sometimes, <laughs> but you know, it, it's kind of like we've both been there. Like we, we started out probably about the same time, eight to 10 years ago. Um, and we've kind of grown over the past six years together, you know, bouncing ideas off each other. And, you know, as you saw LBX, you know, just button heads, yeah. you know, on how to do something, yeah. um, you know, and, and having that one, it's, it's fun for me. I like to, to argue and debate with people, but, um, you know, you learn, you learn stuff or yes. hopefully you learn stuff, you know, don't take con uh, criticism, even if it's negative, don't take it as like an attack. Yep. Um, it's, it's not an attack. We're not trying to make you feel bad or make you feel stupid or, or, yeah. or whatever. It's, it's kind of like the tough love thing. You know, yeah. if I tell you, if I tell you, Oh man, that, that is perfect. And it looks like crap. You're right. going to, you're going to think it's perfect. You know, right. I, I hate to hurt your feelings, but it looks like crap. Try right. doing this. You know, I don't say it looks like crap, but you know, it it's could like, be better. It could be better here. Here's a tip. Try this. Yeah. If it see if it works any better, you know, yeah. um, and being been doing this for so long, I, I obviously know what it's like to be in that position. Um, so, you know, one, I like to do it. I could sit here and talk for hours about lasers, rotaries, whatever yeah. I could, I could do it forever. Um, but you know, just learn from others, but be careful where you get your information from. <laughs> I was just going to say, there's a, there's a like, huge difference too, between, um, someone, uh, helping you work through something that there are things that you can like fix and, do better versus someone saying that there's only one way to do something when there are multiple ways to do it. Yeah. And some things are actually potentially dangerous and some things yeah. are <laughs> potentially just wrong. Like I try to be sure that I've, you know, cleared things that seem a little off through proper channels and send people yeah. to the proper channels when there's something I don't know or say like, this is off, you know, off script. Like I'm propping up my autofocus probe. Yeah. 
do that at your own well, risk. <laughs> well, there's things like if you're asking a question on Facebook and you put very little detail into the question as far as what settings, machine, rotary type, yep. whatever, or whatever it's related to. If you don't put a lot of detail in there and you see a bunch of people just shooting, you know, BS answers to you without even asking a single question, don't listen to them. Right. <laughs> like, don't, uh, don't listen to them. Yeah. I mean, if someone's not asking you questions about what are your settings, what laser are you using, what power, speed, lens, Did you, you know, enter your scan offsets. Yeah. Like I've seen pictures and me and Chris have talked about this before. It's like, you see a picture. It's like, Hey, here's my cup. What's, what's wrong with it? Or why is it doing this? You know, if people aren't asking you questions and they're just throwing out yeah. answers, do not listen to them because yeah. it, it's, it's the worst advice you're going to get. They may be right. Or they may have have guessed properly, <laughs> <laughs> but you know I've seen people tear their machines apart. I've seen people just go down the deepest rabbit hole, and it was something very simple, like, right? Like a, a push of a button on the keyboard, simple. Yeah. And they've done tore all their lenses out. They've realigned everything. They've done all this other stuff, tighten, loosen, remove belts. You know, whatever. You know, just. Just be careful who you get your information from. I'm not saying people out there are stupid, but um, it's just there are enough reputable people in this community um, that you should get information from. And like I've seen a couple posts, rotary related specifically, you know, asking questions on Facebook when my number's printed on every rotary. Right. It's like, it's like, he will answer call me. too. Call yep. me. If, if I'm available, I will answer. You will answer. Um, and you will answer the same question multiple <laughs> times. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I, it gets bothersome doing that, like yeah. answering the same question over and over again. But again, it's, you know, obviously different person. But it's just there's enough people out there that know what you're going through. Yeah. You know, but the worst thing you can do is just blindly follow somebody that answers your question on Facebook yeah. without asking, asking for details or anything like that. So um, we got to wrap it up. Of that. Yeah. Well, we don't have to, but yeah, it's, it's over an hour. So, um, but yeah, so uh, just, I don't know. I'll let, I'll let Katie kind of finish off on hers if she wants to say anything. Um, so feel free and I mean, then I'll I wrap it up. And we covered a ton. I think, you know, my, my biggest things are don't give up. Like it, you're going to run into challenges, right? There's going to be things that are challenging, but like Jason said, there's lots of people who are willing to help you work through it. And he's right. If they're not asking questions, they're probably not going to help you work through it. So yeah, um, that's what we're here to do. We love hearing what things people need help with. So, you know, making a video is helpful because hopefully it can hit the right person at the right time when they're searching for something and yep. so if there's videos I can make that are helpful, I like doing that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again for coming on as our, as our, uh, inaugural. So it went so guest. fast. <laughs> yeah. Time flew. Yeah. Um, so hopefully everybody got a, a good piece of information. Like I said, I, I linked, um, her newest video, which specifically talks about wraps, but a lot of that information can roll over into just doing basic engraving yeah. on on tumblers it doesn't have to be wraps but a lot of the information is great information for for doing anything rotary related really doesn't matter what rotary you have um it just take a look at it it's linked in the uh the chat on at least where i posted all the facebook um and uh check it out things katie makes uh she's got quite a few videos i don't know how many videos you got i don't know <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, I just want to look here. So there's only 49 videos, but a lot of the videos, she puts a lot of work into them and they're very um, informative on, hey. on what she, what she's doing. So take a look at it. You know, more is not always better. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I know she's working on more. She's, she's been busy. So um, I'm sure there's going to be more to come out from her. So thank you for, for joining me on this. Um, sorry, for everybody. Was, sorry for everybody that was looking for Chris for a little <laughs> bit of argument sake, but uh, um, thanks for watching uh, 
episode three of this. I hope to keep this going. We'll get more people on here. And if you guys have any questions or whatever, leave them in the comment section of, of the videos and, uh, we'll try to answer them as best we can. And, uh, other than that, don't forget to, if you go to her page, which I hope you do, uh, don't forget to like subscribe and ring the bell, all that stuff. Same with, uh, ours, Rotoboss Rotary Attachments. Uh, we have a lot of videos coming out with, with all our rotaries on how to do certain things and, we're working They're on really good, Jason. Their production quality is top notch. Yeah, I, I got someone besides myself to do it, so <laughs> so it comes out a little bit better. Uh, but we're working on that. He's he's new to doing it, so um, Great. we'll get better at it as we go. But we plan on doing a lot more stuff, um, and I hope to see a lot more stuff from you. Hope to see you guys in episode four, whenever that is, probably in a couple <laughs> weeks. Um, we're trying to keep it on a two week schedule, but. Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes because we're trying to, to get everybody's schedules lined up. Um, and unfortunately, it didn't happen tonight. But thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. We can find us anywhere on Facebook, and we'll be happy to help you. So until next time, I hope you guys have a great evening, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. <laughs>